A centerfire cartridge is a cartridge with a primer located in the center of the cartridge case head. Unlike rimfire cartridges, the primer is a separate and replaceable component. Centerfire cartridges have supplanted the rimfire variety in all but the smallest cartridge sizes. With the exception of a few .17 caliber and .22 caliber pistol and rifle cartridges, small bore shotgun cartridges, and a handful of antique, mostly obsolete cartridges, almost all pistol, rifle, and shotgun ammunition used today is centerfire. Advantages Centerfire cartridges are more reliable for military purposes, because the thicker metal cartridge cases can withstand rougher handling without damage. Centerfire cartridges are safer to handle. Because explosive priming compound in a protruding rim is more likely to be detonated by impact if a rimfire cartridge is dropped or pinched. The stronger base of a centerfire cartridge protects the central primer from side impact, and is able to withstand higher pressures than a thin rimfire cartridge. Higher pressures give a bullet higher velocity and greater energy. While centerfire cartridge cases require a complex and expensive manufacturing process, explosive handling is simplified by avoiding the spinning process required to uniformly distribute priming explosive into the rim because of uncertainty about which angular segment of a rimfire cartridge rim will be struck by the firing pin. Larger caliber rimfire cartridges require greater volumes of priming explosive than centerfire cartridges, and the required volume may cause an undesirably high pressure during ignition. Reducing the amount of priming explosive would reduce the reliability of rimfire cartridge ignition, and increase the probability of misfire or dud cartridges. Economies of scale are achieved through interchangeable primers for a wide variety of centerfire cartridge calibers. The expensive individual brass cases can be reused after replacing the primer, gunpowder and projectile. Handloading reuse is an advantage for rifles using obsolete or hard-to-find centerfire cartridges such as the 6.5A, 54mm Manly Chara Euro Paragraph Na, or larger calibers such as the .458 lot, for which ammunition can be expensive. The forward portion of some empty cases can be reformed for use as obsolete or wildcat cartridges with similar base configuration. Modern cartridges larger than .22 caliber are mostly centerfire. Actions suitable for larger caliber rimfire cartridges declined in popularity until the demand for them no longer exceeded manufacturing costs, and they became obsolete. History, an early form of centerfire ammunition, without a percussion cap, was invented between 1808 and 1812 by Jean Samuel Pauli. This was also the first fully integrated cartridge. True centerfire ammunition was invented by the Frenchman Clement Pettet in 1829. However, Pettet would not perfect his design until 1855. The centerfire cartridge was improved by Charles Lancaster, George Morse, Francois Schneider, Hiram Burden and Edward Mounier Boxer. Centerfire Primers The identifying feature of centerfire ammunition is the primer which is a metal cup containing a primary explosive inserted into a recess in the center of the base of the cartridge. The firearm firing pin crushes this explosive between the cup and an anvil to produce hot gas and a shower of incandescent particles to ignite the powder charge. Burden and Boxer cartridge primers are both considered centerfire, and are not interchangeable at the primer level. However, the same weapon can fire either burden or boxer primed cartridges if the overall dimensions are the same. The two primer types are almost impossible to distinguish by looking at the loaded cartridge, though the two flash holes can be seen inside a fired burden case and the larger single hole seen or felt inside a fired boxer case. Burden priming is less expensive to manufacture and is much more common in military surplus ammunition made outside the United States equals burden primer equals burden primers are named after their american inventor hiram burden of new york who invented his first variation of the burden primer and patented it on march 20 1866 in us patent 53388 a small copper cylinder formed the shell of the cartridge and the primer cap was pressed into a recess in the outside of the closed end of the cartridge opposite the bullet in the end of the cartridge beneath the primer cap was a small vent hole, as well as a small teat-like projection or point fashioned from the case, 
such that the firing pin could crush the primer against the anvil and ignite the propellant. This system worked well, allowing the option of installing a cap just before use of the propellant loaded cartridge as well as permitting reloading the cartridge for reuse. Difficulties arose in practice because pressing in the cap from the outside tended to cause a swelling of the copper cartridge shell, preventing reliable seating of the cartridge in the chamber of the firearm. Burden's solution was to change to brass shells, and to further modify the process of installing the primer cap into the cartridge, as noted in his second Burden primer patent of September 29, 1868, in U.S. Patent 82587. Burden primers have remained essentially the same functionally to the present day. Burden primers are similar to the caps used in the caplock system, being small metal cups with pressure-sensitive explosive in them. Modern burden primers are pressed into the primer pocket of a burden-type cartridge case, where they fit slightly below flush with the base of the case. Inside the primer pocket is a small bump, the anvil, that rests against the center of the cup, and two small holes that allow flash from the primer to reach the interior of the case. Burden cases are reusable, although the process is rather involved. The used primer must be removed usually by hydraulic pressure or a pincer or lever that pulls the primer out of the bottom. A new primer is carefully seated against the anvil, and then powder and a bullet are added. Equals boxer primer equals, meanwhile, Colonel Edward Mounier Boxer, of the Royal Arsenal, Woolwich, England was working on a primer cap design for cartridges, patenting it in England on October 13, 1866, and subsequently received a U.S. patent for his design on June 29, 1869, in U.S. Patent 91818. Boxer primers are similar to burden primers with one major difference, the location of the anvil. In a boxer primer, the anvil is a separate stirrup piece that sits inverted in the primer cup providing sufficient resistance to the impact of the firing pin as it indents the cup and crashes the pressure-sensitive ignition compound. The primer pocket in the case head has a single flash hole in its center. This positioning makes little or no difference to the performance of the round, but it makes fired primers vastly easier to remove for reloading, as a single, centered rod pushed through the flash hole from the open end of the case will eject the two-piece primer from the primer cup. A new primer, anvil included, is then pressed into the case using a reloading press or hand tool. Boxer priming is universal for U.S. manufactured civilian factory ammunition. Boxer primed ammunition is slightly more complex to manufacture, since the primer is in two parts in addition to the pressure-sensitive compound, but automated machinery producing primers by the hundreds of millions has eliminated that as a practical problem. And while the primer is one step more complex to make, the cartridge case is simpler to make, use, and reload. Boxer primer sizes. Early primers were manufactured with various dimensions and performance. Some standardization has occurred where economies of scale benefit ammunition manufacturers. Boxer primers for the United States market come in different sizes, based on the application. The type sizes of primers are, 0.175 inches diameter small pistol primers, and a thicker or stronger metal cup small rifle version for use with higher pressure loadings in weapons with heavy firing pin impact. 0.209 inches diameter primers for shotgun shells and modern inline muzzle loaders, using a boxer type primer factory assembled inside a tapered, flanged brass cup. 0.210 inches diameter large rifle primers and a thinner or softer metal cup large pistol version for use with lower pressure loadings in weapons with light firing pin impact. Large rifle primers are also 0.008 inches taller than large pistol primers. 0.315 inches diameter .50 BMG primers, used for the .50 Browning machine gun cartridge and derivatives, examples of uses, .38 special, small pistol standard. 0.357 Magnum, small pistol Magnum, 0.45 ACP, large pistol standard, 0.223 Remington, small rifle standard, 0.308 Winchester, large rifle standard, 0.270 WSM, large rifle Magnum, the primer size is based on the primer pocket of the cartridge, with standard types available in large or small diameters. 
the primer's explosive charge is based on the amount of ignition energy required by the cartridge design. A standard primer would be used for smaller charges or faster burning powders, while a magnum primer would be used for the larger charges or slower burning powders used with large cartridges or heavy charges. Rifle, large and magnum primers increase the ignition energy delivered to the powder, by supplying a hotter, stronger and or longer lasting flame. Pistol cartridges often are smaller than modern rifle cartridges, so they may need less primer flame than rifles require. A physical difference between pistol and rifle primers is the thickness of the primer's case. Since pistol cartridges usually operate at lower pressure levels than rifles, their primer cups are thinner, softer, and easier to ignite, while rifle primers are thicker and stronger, requiring a harder impact from the firing pin. Equals shotgun primers equals. All modern shotgun shells are center fire. They use a large, specific shotgun primer that is based on the boxer system, in that the primer contains the anvil against which the primary explosive is compressed by the firing pin and deformation of the primer cup. Shotgun primers are also used as a replacement to the percussion cap ignition system in some modern black powder firearms. Primer chemistry, primer manufacture and insertion is the most dangerous part of small arms ammunition production. Sensitive priming compounds have claimed many lives including the founder of the famous British Ely ammunition firm. Modern commercial operations use protective shielding between operators and manufacturing equipment. Early primers used the same mercury fulminate used in 19th century percussion caps. Black powder could be effectively ignited by hot mercury released upon decomposition. Disadvantages of mercuric primers became evident with smokeless powder loadings. Mercury fulminate slowly decomposed in storage until the remaining energy was insufficient for reliable ignition. Decreased ignition energy with age had not been recognized as a problem with black powder loadings because black powder could be ignited by as little energy as a static electricity discharge. Smokeless powder often required more thermal energy for ignition. Misfires and hang fires became common as the remaining priming compounds sputtered in old primers. A misfire would result if the priming compound either failed to react to the firing pin fall or extinguished prior to igniting the powder charge. A hang fire is a perceptible delay between the fall of the firing pin and discharge of the firearm. In extreme cases, the delay might be sufficient to be interpreted as a misfire, and the cartridge could fire as the action was being opened or the firearm pointed in an inappropriate direction. Incandescent particles were found most effective for igniting smokeless powder after the primary explosive gases had heated the powder grains. Artillery charges frequently included a smaller quantity of black powder to be ignited by the primer, so incandescent potassium carbonate was spread fire through the smokeless powder. Potassium chlorate was added to mercury fulminate priming mixtures so incandescent potassium chloride would have a similar effect in small arms cartridges. Priming mixtures containing mercury fulminate leave metallic mercury in the bore and empty cartridge case after firing. The mercury was largely absorbed in the smoky fouling with black powder loads. Mercury coated the interior of brass cases with smokeless powder loads and the higher pressures of smokeless powder charges forced the mercury into grain boundaries between brass crystals where it formed zinc and copper amalgams weakening the case so it became unsuitable for reloading. The United States Army discontinued use of mercuric priming mixtures in 1898 to allow arsenal reloading of fired cases during peacetime. Frankfurt Arsenal FA-70 primers used potassium chlorate as an oxidizer for lead, 2, thiocyanate, to increase the sensitivity of potassium chlorate, and antimony trisulfide, as an abrasive, with minor amounts of trinitrotoluene. These corrosive primers leave a residue of potassium chloride salt in the ball after a cartridge is fired. These hygroscopic salt crystals will hold moisture from a humid atmosphere and cause rusting. These corrosive primers can cause serious damage to the gun unless the barrel and action are cleaned carefully after firing. Civilian ammunition manufacturers began offering non-corrosive primers in the 1920s, but most military ammunition continued to use corrosive priming mixtures of established reliability. 
The various proprietary priming formulations used by different manufacturers produced some significantly different ignition properties until the United States issued military specifications for non-corrosive primers for 7.62 X51M NATO cartridge production. The PA-101 primers developed at Pickett in the arsenal used about 50% lead stiffnet with lesser amounts of barium nitrate, antimony trisulfide, powdered aluminum and tetrazin. Most United States manufacturers adopted the PA-101 military standard for their civilian production of boxer primers. Manufacturers subsequently offered more powerful magnum primers for uniform ignition of civilian long-range or big-game cartridges with significantly greater powder capacity than required for standard infantry weapons. Other explosives used in primers can include lidazide, potassium perchlorate, or diazodonitrophenol. New on the markets in the late 1990s are lead-free primers, see Green Bullet, to address concerns over the lead and other heavy metal compounds found in older primers. The heavy metals, while small in quantity, are released in the form of a very fine soot. Some indoor firing ranges are moving to ban primers containing heavy metals due to their toxicity. Lead-free primers were originally less sensitive and had a greater moisture sensitivity and correspondingly shorter shelf life than normal non-corrosive primers. Since their introduction, lead-free primers have become better in their performance compared to early lead-free primers, as reported by AccurateShooter.com in October 2011. Tests comparing lead-free primers to lead-based primers conducted by the U.S. Department of Defense exposed some significant differences in accuracy between the two primers when used in 7.62 x51. In these tests, lead-free primers were proven to be not as accurate as lead-based primers. The lead-free primers exhibited poor performance as far as peak blast pressure, which consequently leads to poor ignition. Popularity is still minimal, as accuracy is paramount. Most lead-free primers are sourced through Russia or South Korea. Military surplus ammunition often uses inexpensive corrosive or slightly corrosive burden primers because they work reliably under severe conditions, whereas modern boxer primers are almost always non-corrosive and non-mercuric. Determination of corrosive or non-corrosive characteristics based on the primer type should consider these final headstamp dates of corrosive ammunition production, 0.45 ACP, FA-54, FCC-53, RA-52. TW53, WCC52, WRA54, 0 .30-06 Springfield, FA56, LC52, RA51, SL52, TW52, WCC51, WRA54, FN57. For more detailed information on identifying USGI corrosive and non-corrosive ammunition based on cartridge headstamp. See Corrosive Primer Review by M. E. Podony, ALGC. This article refers to the American Rifleman, Beginner's Digest, Non-Mercuric, Non-Corrosive Primers, pages 34 Euro 36, January 1961. See also, Cartridge, Rimfire. References.